Okay, good. So we, so those who were not who are not here haven't really missed much. So thank you for reminding that, Brad, Brad about that, Brad. So um, now, Peter, if if I could just go back to you, you did mention keto, but why is this attacks again? Uh, because uh, it's tied to the sales. So uh, it's the. The, the act said that it was a license fee based on 2% of their projected sales revenues. So uh, a license fee, it, in this case here, it, it's going to be different depending on how many sales you've had. So it's effectively, uh, it's tied to sales. And uh, Justice Kitko stated that a license fee was not an excise if there was no connection between license fees and any particular sale. Okay, so, uh, in this case, there is a direct correlation between what they're calling a license fee and sales. Peter, the, the, the problem with that narrow approach to defining the tax is that if I were to say that uh, this particular law would relate to a license fee for the purpose of engaging in a profession, so it's not about the sale, it's about engaging in the profession, would that take it out of the of the ambit of the definition of a tax? Because you said earlier that it has to be related to a sale. So what if it's not based on a sale? It's just based on the ability of a person to practice a profession and therefore there is a license fee for that. Can I say something, Manjay? Yes, who would that be? Anthony or Tony. Yes. Tony, Tony, go ahead, please. A license fee, you can only take the amount of money required for yes. that license fee any more yes. is a tax, passed as a tax. Okay. And with, with a percentage of a, of a sale, it's more than likely you'll be taking more than what you need for the license fee. So it'll be deemed a, an excise or a tax. Thank you. Thank you for that, Tony. But my concern still is we're narrowly defining the definition of a tax as if, you know, we're trying to compare it and contrast it to the notion of an excise or an excise tax. But my question is, what if there is an imposition by, let's say, the Commonwealth Parliament, but it is not based on sales? It is simply, it's probably based, let's say, on income or uh, the value of a property or the, you know, the ability to practice a profession. So it's not based on sales. Would that mean, therefore, that it cannot be a tax? We seem to be missing something important here. What is that? I actually saw one of the one of you here uh, saying what it, you know what saying something important. Martin, perhaps you could help us here. What are we missing? Martin, can, are you able to turn on your mic? Uh, okay, how about somebody else? Can somebody tell us? We're missing something here. What is it that we're missing? Martin has been referring to it in his um, answer there in the chat box. It must be three tests. Can somebody help us here? It's Margie here, Manjo. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm right, but is it because it's not for services rendered? No. Um, not exactly, not exactly. If we say that it is a tax, where do we begin? If you go through the cases, where do they begin? They actually begin by asking whether or not this is a tax. There you go from Jeremy. Jeremy, so tell us, what is this about? If you could. Whether or not, sorry, whether or not it's a compulsory exaction of money for, or by a public authority for a public purpose. Very good. So before, before we even try to, to determine whether this is an excise, because actually for the purpose of the Commonwealth Parliament, it's really irrelevant. You don't ask if, if it is the Commonwealth Parliament that is imposing an excise or an excise tax. It doesn't matter because the Commonwealth Parliament has the exclusive power to do that. The basic question we need to ask is, is this a tax? And we, we look at the basic definition of a, chat, of, of a tax as pointed out by Jeremy, there are three elements there. It must be a compulsory exaction. Uh, it's an exaction of money by a public authority, and it is for a public purpose. So if those three elements are there, then we can say that it is a tax. 
right? Now, however, it is argued by the Commonwealth Parliament that this is not a tax, but it's actually a license fee. So that's where we go to the answer of Peter Ritchie earlier. Although it might be possible to say that it looks like a tax, it can be argued that it is not a tax, but actually a license fee. How do you, how do you respond to that kind of argument? Thank you, Martin. You, you got it right there. So the three elements of what is a tax. So how would you respond to the argument that this is not a tax, but it is actually a license fee? Can anyone answer that question? Um, it's Margie here. Maggie, go ahead. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> is it that it must be part of a regulatory scheme? That's or right. Thank you. Very good. Go on. Yes. And it involve, what else? involve the imposition of a justifiable amount? Yes. What do we mean by justifiable amount? Commensurate to the cost of implementing the scheme, it, as in it's not just about how much it costs to have the scheme yep. running. Very good. And in this case, how, how does it appear? It must be a justifiable amount as well. Yes, very good. Thank you, Peter. So good. And in this case, are we able to say that um, it's actually a justifiable amount? Can we not say that it is a justifiable amount? Tony, you said no. Is somebody able to explain? Why isn't that a justifiable amount? Because it's based on projected sales. Okay. Yeah, but that, that wouldn't necessarily take it out of the notion of a of a of a justifiable amount. Why why wouldn't that amount be justifiable if it's two percent of their projected sales revenues? What's the problem with that? Yeah, Jeremy is saying two percent is hardly excessive. Yeah, but if you if you make sales of two million dollars, yeah, it's going to go up, isn't it? Very good. Who was that? Who was that? Tony. Okay. Very good. So what about that, Tony? So explain. So what's the implication of that? It means the uh, charge is going to vary. Um, it's going to be variable according to the um, sales. And therefore, if it's variable, so what? It means that it's going to be different across yeah. different businesses, which is, means that it's singling out an individual. Okay, yeah, so it basically means that if it's kind of, if it's ad valorem, if it's, it's based on a percentage, it doesn't make sense because there is no direct correlation between the value of the services, which we presume is gonna be the same across all businesses. So why should some pay more than others? And imagine a situation where somebody is earning, you know, $2 million, another one's earning just 2,000, Someone will probably be paying just about $2. The other one will be made paying more than $100,000. So in that case, the amount is not justifiable because there is no direct correlation between the value of the services and the amount of the license fee that needs to be paid. Good. So was that clear enough? Questions before we move on to the next discussion question? None? Thank you. Very good. Let's move on to discussion question number 42. Peter? Uh, sorry, uh, Patrick, would you like to uh, read the question for us? Yes. Uh, in order to control and regulate the importation and exportation of dietary supplements, <coughs> excuse me, many of which had exaggerated claims and no proven efficacy, Commonwealth Parliament passed a Dietary Supplements Regulatory Act under the Act of Businesses, regardless of size or annual revenues that engage in the importation, sale or distribution of dietary supplements as defined in the Act. A defined supplier license are required to pay a license fee of $5,000 per year. XYZ Enterprises, a small company engaged in the sale of dietary supplements, solely in Victoria and with annual sales of $100,000, seeks to challenge the Commonwealth legislation. On what grounds can a challenge be made? Advise the company on whether its legal challenge is likely to prosper. Thank you. Um, within one minute, can I ask everyone to post his or her answer in the chat box? 
So tell us whether or not the legal challenge is likely to prosper and on what ground can a challenge be made? Okay, license fee. I'm, ju I'm just gonna, sorry. Um, I'm just gonna start posting here some of the answers that I'm seeing. So somebody mentioned, I'm not, I'm not sure who it was. Um, who was from? Not sure. can I, I seem to have missed it. Now somebody was saying something about license fee, and then the fact that oh, and the fact that it's unfair. Okay. Yep. Go on. How about the others? I haven't seen so many answers yet. I'd like to see the others uh, participating. As I pointed out, it is not sufficient for you to earn a mark for online group participation by just uh, attending the tutorial. You need to engage, and part of the and the engagement can be done by answering the chat box or taking the floor using and using the mic. Excessive, okay, yep. Aha, fee for a license and therefore excessive. It does appear to be excessive, uh, non-discriminatory. Okay, too excessive. Uh, okay. Okay. Yep, are we ready to discuss this? Discriminates against small businesses. Okay, uh, we could probably begin. Uh, okay. Now, the first question I'd like to ask is, if we talk about a license fee, do we need to talk about it in, in connection to the notion of excessive, or can we do, you know, that these are two different things? Meaning, you know, it can be argued that the amount itself is excessive, whether or not it is a license fee. I, mean, I think that's one basic question. And the second question is, so let me just pose that question there. So. The first question I'm raising is that, based on what you've stated so far, the first point I'm raising is that um, if it is excessive, therefore, uh, there is a ground. So that's what you're saying for a challenge, okay? The other point is, if it is a license fee and the amount is excessive, Therefore, there is a ground. Okay, let's deal with these two things uh, separately, I believe. Let me begin by the with, 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 uh, with what I formulated to be number two, and then we'll get back to the point one. So I have a question there. So we're saying, some of you are saying, that if it is a license fee, and therefore, as we said, as we noted earlier in the first discussion question, the amount of the license fee must be commensurate to the value of the services rendered for which the license is being given. So we, we, we've, we've heard that earlier. So my question is, if assuming that it's kind of, it, it is described or characterized as a license fee, and in fact, the amount of the, 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 uh, the, value, the, the cost of the license far exceeds the value of the services rendered, in the process of providing the license. So in other words, they don't correlate. It, the amount of the, the cost of the license is not commensurate to the value of the services. Assuming that is the case, the question I will ask straight away for now is this. Does that make the law passed by the Parliament, Commonwealth Parliament, invalid? Let me repeat the question. If the cost of the license fee, for, we're talking of a law passed by the Commonwealth Parliament here. So if, a, if the cost of a license fee far exceeds the value of the services rendered for which the license is issued, does that make it per se, does that, does that, does that provision or that law become invalid? 
on that basis? Okay, some are saying no. Can somebody explain? Some are saying yes. Can somebody explain? So we've got two schools of thought here. Some are saying no, some are saying yes. I hope you understand. I'm NJ. Yes. It's Audrey. Audrey, yes. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be completely wrong here, but I'll take a stab in the dark. Go ahead, please. Um, a high license fee may be deemed appropriate in some cases, in line with the case of Harper versus Minister for Sea and Fisheries. Mm -hmm. So just because a license fee is high doesn't uh, mean it's going to be okay. unconstitutional. Is that right? Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, what, was that Audrey? Yes, it was. Thank you. Um, I'm going to get back to that, Audrey, because although you touched on it in a bit cor uh, correctly, but it's not the answer to the question that I posed. But you're right. I mean, you know, it's, it's linked to that, that based on the case of Harper versus Minister of Fisheries, um, even if the cost of the license fee far exceeds the value of the services rendered for which the license is given, it can still be valid under that specific circumstances of that specific case. And I'm going to go back to that shortly, but not yet. But I'd still like to go back to that question. So what if the Commonwealth Parliament passes a law, you know, that the, and the license fee far exceeds the cost of the value of the services rendered? Does that make that law per se invalid? That's my question. Some are saying yes, some are saying no. Can somebody explain and take the floor? I've seen a lot of yes and no's, but no reasoning yet. Can somebody take the floor? Come on, go on. Try it. You, you want to be lawyers. So, you know, it's, it's all right to be making a mistake in our tutorial. This is part of the learning process. Manjo, uh, it's Maggie. Who was that? Sorry, Maggie? I can't see names here. Maggie, go ahead, Maggie. Um, would it, wouldn't it depend, though, on the facts, like the actual size of the fee? Like, wouldn't they weigh that into consideration? So that would become a factor, whether it would be valid or not? I'll give you an example. What if the, value, what if the license fee is, is $100,000 a year, regardless of the amount of sales? So I'm giving that as part of the, of, the, of the facts, based on the question I propounded earlier. Would that make the law invalid? So instead of $100,000 a year, it's $100,000 a year regardless of the sales. If it exceeded the cost of implementing the scheme, it would be, wouldn't it? It's given, it's given that it far exceeds the value of the services rendered. Does it make it invalid? Richard? Yeah, I reckon it does. Uh-huh. How about Richard? Would you like to say something? Richard Francis. Paul, can somebody explain? Paul, you want to take the floor? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I can have a go, man. Joe, Peter Ritchie again. Peter Ritchie, yes. All right, Peter. Uh, yeah, essentially, if, if it is deemed to be excessive, uh, mm -hmm. greater than the cost of regulating the scheme, it's essentially a tax. Yes. And if that tax has then been tacked onto uh, Dietary Supplements Regulatory right. Act, well, you can't do that. So it would, would be invalid because you have to have your own good, act. Good, good. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Th that was the point I was making. The fact alone that a license fee far exceeds the value of a service that's rendered will not per se make it invalid or unconstitutional. It only means it is a tax. And then, in the specific facts here, because it seems to be tacked to the Dietary Supplements Regulatory Act, only then can you probably say that this is a tax and there is attacking, therefore it is unconstitutional. But if it were to appear as a form of a you know, tax legislation actually, so even if it were denominated as a license fee, and it, far, it is very excessive, that won't make the law invalid because that is part of the taxing power of the Commonwealth. Which brings us to the question, what if the tax is in fact excessive? Would that be a basis to, de to say that the law is unconstitutional? Let us in fact say that the, that the tax is confiscatory. 
about you know 80% of sales, uh, the basis of the tax would be let's say 80% of the sales, whatever. Would that make the 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 law invalid if it is excessive? Well, yes, because it's revenue raising. Yeah, if it is revenue, so if it is revenue raising. I mean, isn't that what the Commonwealth Parliament is meant to do in the first place? It's meant to raise revenues. It is within its power. In other words, the question is, can you think, do you think that the High Court will impose a limit on the power of the Commonwealth Parliament to determine what tax rates should be? Why would that be legal revenue raising, Anthony? Well, I think they're, they're taking more than they need and they can only take what they need. Okay, um, so we, we need to remember uh, the case of Deputy Federal Commissioner of Taxation versus True Hold Benefit Proprietary Limited, which is in our um, lecture notes, that the harshness of the tax will not mean that the tax law becomes invalid. It's actually a political question in the end. The High Court or the justices will leave it to the parliamentarians, to the members of parliament, to determine what the appropriate tax rates should be. It is not for the courts to second guess what the political decisions are of the uh, elected members of parliament. So the fact that a tax is excessive, the, ta the fact that a tax may be oppressive or confiscatory will not be sufficient grounds to say that the law is, that the, ta that the tax law therefore is invalid. Are we clear about that? That should be clear. Now, the reason why the challenge, the legal challenge here will prosper is because, considering that this is a tax, because the cost of the license fee far exceeds the value of the cost of the services rendered, because it, be, therefore, this is clearly a tax. And because it is a tax, under uh, Section 55 of the Constitution, they should, the tax law should only relate to the imposition of taxes and nothing else. So this involves stacking. And because the, this uh, tax has been tacked onto uh, the uh, law on dietary supplements, therefore it's valid under six, Section 55. Are we clear about that? Clear? So we will proceed. Yep, courts won't go, get involved in relation to the question of whether or not the, the, the tax rate itself is excessive. So we can proceed. We'll proceed. Okay, thank you. Um, Patrick, can I ask you to read the question for us? Discussion question 43. Yes. The Commonwealth Parliament passed the Overseas Education Providers Act to regulate the provision and delivery of education to overseas students by Australian educational institutions. The Act also requires such overseas education providers to contribute an amount equal to 2% of tuition fees paid by each overseas student to the Australian Education Advancement Board for its annual operation. The AEAP is a non-government organisation created by and composed of overseas education providers to suffragate the provision and delivery of education to overseas students by its members. North Star International College, a private education provider catering to overseas students and which is not a member of the AEAB seeks to challenge the law. On what grounds can a challenge be made advise North Star International College on whether it's a legal challenge is likely to prosper? Thank you, Patrick. Now, I just want to remind you that because we're now in week 11, when the question, especially when we have the uh, final written online assessment in relation to that, when the question is posed on what legal challenge can uh, an action be made, you have to think of all the possible legal challenges. So in this case, don't just think in terms of what we're discussing, which is uh, topic nine this week. Think also in terms of the previous topics, whether they're, they're topics seven or eight. Okay, J just as a reminder. So when, when the question there is, says, on what grounds can a challenge be made, don't limit your answers to the topic of week nine. Okay. So we're gonna ask everyone to post his or her answer in the chat box. And then we will proceed to discuss the discussion question.
Very good. Very good. I'm getting very good answers here. Thank you, Jeremy. Well done. Yep, very good. Very good from Vivian as well. Well done. Good. Good. Okay. Okay, so can, can somebody take the floor and give us an answer? Can somebody take the floor? Someone? Can I get somebody to volunteer to take the floor? Come on. Can somebody volunteer? Okay, I'll volunteer. Who would that be? It's Audrey again. Audrey, thank you, Audrey. Go ahead, please. Okay, so first things first, North Star International College would have grounds to challenge the law on the basis that the AAB is not a public authority and is a non-government organisation and a tax is a compulsory exaction of money by a public authority for public purposes, Matthews v Chicory. So that's the ground to challenge the the law. Hold on, uh, um, let, let's stop there. What's okay. the basis of the challenge? So, so what yes. if the one collecting the, the, the imposition or the so-called tax is a private well, agency? What's the basis for the legal challenge? Well, only, pe only public authorities are, are allowed to collect taxes and mm -hmm. you have a non-government organisation that's collecting that tax. Mm. Okay, thank you. Would anyone have another opinion in relation to what Audrey just said? Would anyone have another opinion? Um, Manjo, is North Star International College, that's obviously not in Australia? Um, would that matter? Well, well, can they actually do that to an overseas provider? Um, let's not get into that because it will tie us up in, in other legal issues, which I don't want to talk um, about yet. Okay. The, the basic question I had was that, I mean, as pointed out by Audrey, the fact that the one collecting the so-called tax seems to be a private agency uh, would, would uh, ground a legal challenge. Would everyone agree with that? Or is somebody willing to take a contrary opinion? And I'm seeing a lot of chat going on. Can somebody take the floor? Okay, well, then, yeah, who, who wants to do, take the floor? Uh, it's Vivian, I'm not very well, but I think my mic might be working now, is it? Yes, it is, it is. Okay, there was a case, and I'm just trying to find the name of it, but they actually said that if a, if Parliament actually delegates it to a private organisation to regulate the field, Yes. Um, that they can impose that fee yes. involved regulating the industry, so long as it was in the public good and it was delegated by the legislation. Sorry, um, I, meant, who was that? Yes? Oh, it's Audrey. I was just going to say the other ground to challenge the law would be that the Commonwealth Parliament is legislating with regards to education. Ah, okay. Yes. However, the, yeah, that's right. I mean, that's... That would have been a good uh, ground for a legal challenge. That's right. Um, but I'd like to go back to that, to, that, uh, to that issue first. Can somebody help us here? Which well, issue? Why, well, why is it important to determine whether or not, I mean, is it really important? Does it matter whether or not the one collecting the tax is a private agency or a public agency? Does it, does it really matter? No, it doesn't oh, matter. Okay, who was that? Who said that? No, why, why doesn't it matter? And why are we even asking that question of who's collecting the tax? Um, because because it's who, who's willing to take the floor? Tony, yes? Tony. Oh, no, it, it, it doesn't matter. As long as they got delegation through uh, the legislation, anyone can uh, collect the tax. Okay. Now, why are we even trying to raise this point about 
questioning the fact that the collecting agency seems to be a private agency. Why are you raising that point? Why? Hi, it's Catherine here. Catherine, yes. Hi there. Because we're, to start off with, you have to look at the definition of what a tax is. Very good, yes. And that was, was defined in the case of Matthews and Chicory as a compulsory exaction of money by a public authority for public purposes. Very good. Very good. So that's, that's the reason. If you look at the definition, it says that the collecting agency must be a public authority. Now, obviously, the one collecting the tax here seems to be a private agency. So therefore, could it be argued that this cannot be a tax because it's being collected by a private agency? Would that be a sound no. argument? No, because... Josh? Uh, this, is, this is Josh. Yes. Because um, in the um, tape ma manufacturer's case, it says that it's not essential to the concept of a tax that it be made by a public authority. And it followed a decision that basically said that as long as it was properly described as being for the purposes of, of public use, then it was okay. Very good. Thank you. So that's the reasoning. Uh, both under Australian Tape Manufacturers Association as well as the case of Air Caledonia International, the High Court has ruled that it doesn't matter if the one collecting the tax is a private agency. It will still be a tax if the, th the three key elements are there. In fact, um, I think it was uh, Chief Justice, I think it was um, Justice Latham who said that if it were a private agency that collected the tax, at least for that purpose, he will be considered as if it were a public authority. Okay, so that's not going to be a problem. So, so what's the legal challenge now? So um, uh, Audrey was correct in saying that, you know, the issue of education could be one of them. What else? What's what's the problem here? If if this is this a tax or what? Is this a tax? That, that's does it have question. to be upon? Huh? Yes. Does it, have, does it have to be levied upon goods? Um, to be a tax? Certainly not. No. No, um, it could be more regarded as a um, an excise or a or a uh, couldn't really call it a tax um, uh, because it, it's similar to the other problem we had um, in problem two. Um, yes, Th this appears to be a license fee because they're saying that the purpose is to regulate. So if, that, if the purpose is regulation, would this be a license fee or is this a tax? Sorry, yeah, I, I reckon it's a license fee. Okay. Would everyone agree that this is a license fee and not a tax? I don't think it's a license fee. Why, is, why so? Because it's compulsory. Um, a tax and a license fee are both compulsory. Well, in this case, they have to pay um, as an education provider, don't they? Um, yeah. Why, why would, you know, why would somebody, I mean, can somebody argue that this is not a license fee and it is in fact a tax because on what basis can you argue that this is not a license fee but it is actually a tax? Because well, it depends, you know, it depends how, it, it depends how much. Ah, yes. Yeah, it, it depends on how much yes. the license fee costs. And in relation to what? And, and the services provided Very good. For, the, for the tuition fees. Very good. Very good. Okay, so that's clear. Are we clear about that? So the answer is um, the ground, uh, the, it could have been challenged with the ground, let's say, of edu uh, that uh, it is not within the power, head of power of the Commonwealth Parliament to legislate in relation to education, but that can quickly be set aside on the basis that under Section 51, Subsection 1 of the Constitution, when it pertains to trade and commerce, it is within the power of the Commonwealth Parliament to legislate on that area. And because this seems to relate to trade and commerce across states and outside of, outside of Australia, it's covered by Section 51, Subsection 1. Now, the, the main ground 
uh, on which the legal challenge could be based is the fact that this appears to be a tax because the value of the license fee far exceeds the cost of the value of the services rendered in providing the license. And because it is a tax, the fact that it is part of the Overseas Education Providers Act, which is a law on education, means that this is not solely a tax law and therefore violates Section 55 of the Australian Constitution. So that's clear. Now, before we leave the subject, let me just change the question a bit. So let me repeat. Before we leave this question, I'm just going to change the question a bit. What if this was a law passed by the Queensland Parliament? Okay. Oh, from Catherine, why is it not a tax? No, no, the answer, Catherine, is this is a tax. Given the tax here, sorry, Catherine, Why is it a license fee? Sorry, Manjami, why is it not a license fee? Why is it uh, a tax? It is, not a license, it, is, it is not a license fee because if it is a license fee, the cost of the license must be commensurate to the value of the services rendered. Here, 2% of tuition fees is a lot of money. You're speaking of millions in the end. You cannot, it's, past, it's difficult to argue that the, the cost of undertaking the services to provide the license is worth a million. It's just too much. It's too excessive. So remember, if it is a license fee, to be a valid license fee and not be considered a tax, the cost, the license fee itself, must be commensurate to the value of the services rendered. Any excess, any amount in excess of the value of the services rendered will be considered a tax. If it is commensurate to that, that will be considered a license fee, a valid license fee. Was that clear enough? So, yep. so it, it's the full amount, the full dollar amount at the end of the day as opposed to the percentage because 2% is quite low. Uh, if, you, if you think about it, when you, when you think of 2% of tuition fees paid by each student, that's a lot of money, that's a lot of dollars. And you, you can't argue so that the, the value of the services rendered for the purpose of regulating this will entail that kind of that kind of cost. So that's the reason. Okay, so it's the final dollar amount. Yes, the final dollar amount. Yes, the final dollar amount. Because you're trying to determine the question really is how much would it cost for the AEAB to regulate the industry? How much would it cost? And that is the amount of the license fee that should be paid. So in other words, if the amount of the license fee that is being charged far exceeds the cost of regulation, that, that excess cost becomes, uh, is considered a tax. Okay, yeah, okay. that's great, thank you. Now, so I don't understand the end part of it, so is it something that can be challenged or not? Ah, uh, it, is, it can be challenged because this is a tax. So the legal, the, the legal challenge will be based on the fact that this is not a license fee. It is not a license fee because the license fee far exceeds the cost or, or the value of the services rendered for the purpose of uh, the issuing the license or for the purpose of regulation. So it is a tax. And because it is a tax, it is a requirement under Section 55 of the Constitution that a taxation law must only relate to the imposition of taxes and nothing else. And because this, in the case that we have here, we have an Overseas Education Providers Act, this is a law on education, which also has a tax in it that violates, therefore, Section 55 of the Constitution because of the idea of tacking. Would that be clear enough? Okay, thank you, man. Thank you. Now, let me just change the question a bit. Assuming that this was a law that was passed by the Queensland Parliament. So let's assume that the Queensland Parliament passed the Overseas Education Providers Act, Queensland, to regulate the provision and delivery of education to overseas students within Queensland. What, would there be a legal challenge? On what ground? And if so, and if so, will the legal challenge prosper or not? Would that be because states aren't allowed to impose taxation? Okay, that raises the question. Are states actually not allowed to impose taxes? Let me, let me repeat the question. Can states impose taxes or not? Okay, good. 
So the answer actually is states can impose taxes. So even if uh, the constitution is clear that the under subsection two of section 51, the Commonwealth Parliament have the power to legislate in relation to taxes, that is not an exclusive power of the Commonwealth Parliament. States can uh, impose taxes. So, how, assuming that it was the Queensland Parliament that passed this law, would there be a legal challenge that can be raised and would that legal challenge prosper? Jeremy, are you, are you able to use the mic? Uh, yeah, is that working? Yes, it is. I'm hearing you. Oh, sorry. So the states can um, impose uh, taxes, just not uh, customs duties, excise, income taxes mm. um, under Section 90. Very good. So that brings us to the question whether or not, assuming, so we remember we're changing the facts this time, okay? Let's be clear, we're trying to change the facts this time. So assuming it was the Queensland Parliament that passed this law, the question therefore is, it's, the question is not whether this is a tax. That won't be sufficient. Because the fact alone that the Queensland Parliament is imposing a tax does not make that law invalid and unconstitutional. It must be grounded on a violation of Section 90. So the question is, can an argument be made that this is in fact an excise, ta an excise tax? Somebody care to take the floor? Would this be an excise tax or not? Well, if it's an excise, wouldn't it have to be on goods only? Aha. Uh -huh. Is there a requirement that for it to be an excise, it has to be physical goods? Is there a requirement? Or is goods, is the notion of goods more encompassing to include services? What do you think? They have to relate to goods, but it could be at any point in the process of the goods. So it could be manufacture or it could be in the chain of distribution until it reaches the consumer. Yeah. So uh, that was a valid point. I think it was, was it Martin or was it Peter who raised the point? Um, if you look at the cases so far, mo most of the case law on excess taxes have related to goods, physical goods, not on services. So we, we don't really know. I haven't come across a case yet which says that. Um, if it's, a, it's, if it's a, a, on services, it is an excise. Typically because the, the sec, section 90 talks about customs duties and excise, we would assume that it has to relate to physical goods, not services. So for this reason, it is difficult to argue that this is an excise tax because it relates to services, okay? So in that case, if this were passed by the Queensland Parliament, it is doubtful if uh, a challenge on the, on the basis that this is an excise tax will prosper because excise taxes, as are traditionally understood, relates to taxes imposed on the sale, distribution, or marketing and manufacture of goods, not on services. Okay, so can we move on to the last question? Because, and you know, we can probably extend it a bit before Wayne Jones takes over this license. Uh, Patrick, can I ask you to please read question 44 for us? Yes, uh, the Queensland Parliament passed the Overseas Education Providers Act, Commonwealth, Commonwealth Parliament, sorry, to regulate the provision and delivery of education to overseas students by Australian educational institutions. The Act or... Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <coughs> We've already done that one. Oh, this one, this one, yep. Uh, under the Act, Queensland businesses, regardless of size or annual revenues that engage in the importation or distribution of dietary supplements, as defined in the Act, are required to pay a licence fee equal to 0.5% of their annual sales or $10,000, which is higher, whichever is higher. XYZ Enterprises is a small company engaged 
in the sale of dietary supplements in Queensland and with annual sales of $100,000 cease to challenge the Queensland legislation. On what grounds can a challenge be made? Advise the, co the company on whether the legal its legal challenge is likely to prosper. Okay. Um, can everyone quickly post his or her answer in the chat box? And if somebody is ready to take the floor, please take the floor. Okay, from Brad, this is a license fee. Okay. Yeah, I'll have a go, man, Jay. Yes, Tony. Yes, please. I don't think the states have jurisdiction to tax goods. It's beyond their power. Okay, go on. That, that's, that's a Commonwealth function. Go so ahead, go on. It's a contravention of Section 90. Yes. And you can use Parton and the Milk Board. Very good. 1494. So the the challenge would prosper. Because this is an excise. Yeah, it's basically a GST, isn't it? Yes, it's a kind of a GST. It's an excise tax. It's a tax on the goods. Thank you. Yeah. Good, Tony. Now, my, my question though is, why do we say that this is a tech, an excise tax and not a license fee? Which leads us to the question, that's correct. I mean, if it is an excise tax, it would be invalid. But the question is, why is this an excise tax and not a license fee? That's, that begs the question. Why are we saying that this is an excise tax and not a license fee? From Peter, it's, yep. Is it because it's related to the regulation of sales, market, marketing and distribution? Okay, so in that case, that makes it a license fee. But what would make it an excise tax? So we agree that it's a license fee because that's what the law says. It's a license fee. But the question is, what would make it an excise, an excise, which is prohibited under Section 90 of the Constitution? Why would we say that this is an excise tax? Aha, from Paul. Paul, can you take the floor? Paul? Yeah, you, can you hear me now? I could, yes. Yeah, sorry, I'm having troubles with my mic today. Um, because it's the percentage of the sales revenue, you know, it, it's totally uh, dictated on the sales of goods, if you like. It's not a fixed fee to mm. cover a, I'm trying to think of the right word, but it's not a fixed fee to cover an established cost. Very good. So it's a giveaway that if the license fee is tied to the value of a sale of the goods, that would typically not be a license fee. It will be a, uh, an excise tax. It's kind of ad valorem. It depends on the value of the sale. Now, however, I have a question here, and I'm going to type it down. Let's assume that the, uh, the license fee is based on 0.5% of, um, of the volume of purchase from the manufacturer uh, of the previous year. So we're just changing the facts this time. So we're clear that based on the facts first, and we'll answer that, uh, this is an excise tax and therefore it is invalid because under Section 90 of the Constitution, only the Commonwealth Parliament had the power to uh, impose excise, excise and customs duties. So under the given facts that I've, I've shown, this is invalid. Now, I'm changing the facts a bit before we end tonight's uh, session. What if the license fee was based on 0.5% of the volume of purchase from the manufacturer of the previous year. Because remember, the ones who are selling the dietary supplements are sourcing it from a manufacturer. Okay, they have to buy it from, they're not producing it themselves. They're purchasing it from a manufacturer. So what if they purchased, the, the license fee is based on the volume of purchase that they make from the manufacturer of the previous year. Would it make a Does difference it or not? Doesn't it have to be in place before it gets to the consumer? Mm. Okay, but I still have to go back to that question. The question is, what if the license fee is based on 0.5% of the volume of purchase from the manufacturer of the previous year? Would it make a difference or not? Would, this, would it make it an excise or not? That's the question. Before we start, before we end this, because um, Wayne it'd Jones... Be a license, it'd be a license fee. It that would be a license fee. fee. Okay, why, why wouldn't it be an excise tax? Who was that? Was it Tony or Peter? Tony. Yeah, Tony. 
Yes, Tony. Why wouldn't it be an excise in this case, in the new set of facts? Because it's not on projected sales. It's on. It's on. Oh, I just can't get it out. <laughs> I know what I'm talking. You're about. actually on the right track because we need to end this. I'm just going to provide you the answer. In the case of Dennis Hotels, we will remember that if uh, the okay, if, if if it's an excise tax, typically. The, you know it's an excess tax because the value of the fee is based on the, the volume or sale or the distribution or manufacturing or the marketing costs of the product. So it's based on that, based on the sale, distribution, marketing, manufacturing of a good. But like in the case of Dennis Hotels, the value of the license fee was based on the purchase of the liquor by, hotel, by the Dennis Hotels from a manufacturer. It wasn't on his sales, but the, the volume of his purchase. So in other words, the volume of his purchase of the previous year has no correlation with the value of his sales today. So he could have purchased $100,000 worth of liquor last year, and, oh, somebody, I think is about to take the device, and the sales today would be $50,000. So in that case, it's not based